Great, thank you, and good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to start by thanking the uh, Chairman, Chairman Paulson, Ranking Member Heinrich, and uh, members of the committee for inviting me here today. I think it's crucially important for the Congress to focus on the economic trajectory of, of the country. Um, I want to emphasize that while I'm director of the uh, Nonpartisan Urban Brookings Tax Policy Center, I'm here testifying on my own behalf. My view, uh, the views I, I, I discuss uh, are my own and shouldn't be attributed to the Tax Policy Center or Urban Institute or Brookings Institution. Given my background, I'm going to focus on the recently passed Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, the most significant tax uh, overhaul in the last 30 years. The, the new law does, does a lot of things. It does some major structural changes in the way that multinational firms are taxed, in the way that pass-through businesses are taxed. Um, it contains dozens of less uh, structural changes, removal of a number of tax expenditures, some income exclusions. Um, cuts rates by, by a third for corporations and more modestly for, for individuals. And all these changes will have implications for, for the economy. But as a starting point for evaluation, I'd like to consider the four basic tenets of good tax policy. First, revenue adequacy, that our tax system should raise enough revenue to pay for the uh, goods and services that the public demands. Second, it should be an efficient tax system. There should be as little um, uh, in a way of, of negative effects on resource allocation, economic behavior, um, economic growth prospects. Third, a tax system should be equitable. There should be horizontal equity in that similarly situated taxpayers get treated about the same. And there should be vertical equity in that taxpayers with a greater ability to pay should contribute a higher portion of their, their income to the, to the tax, uh, to, to, the, to the country. Um, and last, a tax system should be simple. There should be a, a, sim a simplicity component should be designed so individuals and businesses know what the consequences of their behavior are and are able to take that into account um, ahead of time. And the tax uh, system should be clear, uh, comprehensible, and, and predictable. Now, in the real world, all these goals involve trade-offs. And, and um, it makes it uh, possible, though, to keep these goals in mind to, to at least evaluate what, what is going on with the tax system. There are some clear effects of the, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. First, there are revenue effects. It's a big tax cut. Um, it's a big economic stimulus in the short term. Approximately $130 billion in this fiscal year, double that in, in the next year. Second, distributional effects uh, are, are, are pretty clear. The tax benefits are tilted to higher income households. The bottom 20% of the income distribution gets on average about $60 a year, four tenths of a percent of the after tax income. The top 20% gets benefits in excess of $7,600 a year little over 2% of their after-tax income. Um, third, the, there's a temporary nature of these tax cuts. The individual pro, uh, components generally are temporary. The in investment incentives generally temporary. The corporate tax cuts and the structure of the way multinational firms are taxed are, are permanent. The way multinational firms are taxed, quite different under the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, brings the U.S. much more in line with our trading partners, moving us more toward a territorial system and away from a, from a worldwide system with, with deferral. There's been a lot of discussion about the economic effects of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. I think the conventional economic est estimates seem to indicate that there should be a burst of economic activity, economic growth in the short term, but those effects dissipate over time as uh, higher federal um, budget deficits increase interest rates and provide a crowd out for, for investment. Um, the uh, Tax Cuts and Jobs Act will have a big impact on the fiscal position of the United States. If you look at the last 50 or 60 years of data, the U.S. Uh, has seen federal revenues fluctuate between 15 and 20 percent of GDP. And in that time period, there have been two small periods of time when the federal budget was balanced. The most recent one, late 1990s, early 2000s, Revenues were around 20% of GDP. Given demographic trends, retiring baby boomers, longer lifespans, um, lower birth rates, um, we can expect that demands for, for federal goods and services will be 20% or more of, of GDP going forward. And so the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, by cutting revenues in the, in the short and medium term, moves in the opposite direction of, of uh, budget balance. And what this means is the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act really is a large fiscal experiment. The economy is near full employment, and we have a big fiscal stimulus at, at this point in time. Proponents of the act say that there will be improved investment incentives, 
that will lead to greater accumulation of capital, more productive workers, and eventually higher wages for the workers. Um, it's too early to tell at this point whether all those linkages will be, uh, be realized and what the strength of those linkages will be. Really, it'll be months or years before we can tell whether the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act has had the, the intended effect. So the jury is out. Congress will have opportunities to revisit this act in the coming years as provisions expire or phase in or phase out. Um, and there'll be an opportunity to make any necessary changes. So thanks for your attention. Happy to answer any questions you may have.